This is a story about the mental walls and fences we all build around ourselves for self-protection. It is a story about what it takes to destroy the fundamental elements of human nature. It is a story about me and my grandmother Julia. Julia was born almost a century ago in a tiny Eastern European village cut off from the civilized world. Her mother died when she was three and a few years later her father moved out leaving her and her brother with their aunt. She didn't have an easy life being forced to work on the family farm from an early age spending most of her life in the field or taking care of farm animals. Poor, neglected and always exhausted. That's what her early years of life were about. Later she would tell us that she never had a childhood. Always disrespected and treated like a slave worker by everybody. At the age of 8 her father came back to take her away to live with his new family across a nearby river where on top of farming responsibilities she would also be babysitting his newly born child. Abused and disrespected by her new mother-in-law she got fed up with that life and she ran away by getting on a boat to cross the river and went back to the farm. After a few years of being abused and disrespected, this time by her own brother, she abandoned everyone and at the end of World War II she moved to Germany to work in a labor camp. You can imagine the type of life she must have gotten away from if a German labor camp was a better alternative to what she had. After the war she moved back to her native country and she met my grandfather, a guy I never actually had a chance to see. They had four children, one of which died after a few months of being born. My grandfather left her when my dad was 14, many decades later explaining to my aunt that he couldn't stand his crazy wife anymore. Ten years later after he left, my dad met my mom. She moved in with him and my grandmother and I was born. We lived together for the first four years of my life and then we moved to an apartment in a house just across the street where we lived until I was 14. My grandmother was a cold, emotionless person. Deprived of love in her childhood, she became a sour, anxious and frustrated woman. My childhood memories of her are her always being angry at me for me touching her things or for just being a child. She was a devout Christian, always on her way to church, but never really practicing what a loving Christian should do. That striking hypocrisy I remembered vividly, even as a child. She was a very weird person, always ashamed, anxious, not understanding anything and never making an effort to get out of her close-minded, ignorant mindset. Addicted to watching TV and always blindly believing in what she heard on the news. It always felt to me as if I was interacting almost with a robot, not being able to have or process any positive emotions. She never hugged us, never said she loved us. In fact, she never said anything that would be feelings related. Whatever happened to her in her childhood must have been horrible to create such a dysfunctional personality. I had talked to my family before I recorded this video and no one knows what it was. She never told anyone. To this day I don't think I have ever met anyone like her and I do have a lot of broken people around me. When I was 9 things got complicated as my mom moved to another country and my grandmother started helping out with taking care of me and my brother. She never liked my mom and she would always make it perfectly clear what she thought of her and her decisions. Every single day. My relationship with her went from neutral to hostile and I quickly stopped respecting her. I decided not to waste my love on someone who didn't value it. Five years later we moved out to a bigger apartment in another part of the city and as I was growing up my contacts with her became sporadic and after 1999 when I moved to another city I stopped having any contact with her. A few years later I moved out to England and after 2-3 years of being a full-time foreigner I realized the importance of having a family and I decided to start having contacts with everybody again back home. Around 2013 it became apparent that my grandmother is starting to have symptoms of early dementia. It progressed quickly and within one year she didn't know anymore who we were. It was heartbreaking visiting her and not being recognized anymore. During one of those visits I realized something incredible. As I was leaving her apartment, I did something rare for us. I hugged her like you hug a relative saying goodbye and she hugged me back. For the first time ever she hugged me like a person, someone who loves and cares about others. She said she was very happy I visited her and that she was looking forward to seeing me again. She had no idea who I was but her defense mechanism was down and now she was able to love. It turned out that all that time it wasn't her not having the ability to love. It was her hiding behind an artificial facade of insensitivity put up in defense of getting hurt. 
The early pain must have been so big that she decided to shield herself from everybody, including her husband, her children, and her grandchildren. That devastating disease not only took away her ability to remember, it also took away her ability to block her natural loving instincts. Turns out, after all, we're born with the ability to love, and it doesn't need to be acquired, as long as someone doesn't make us deactivate it. Recently, as we were clearing her apartment of her possessions, me and my dad found her old photographs with her face scratched out or cut out. You can only imagine a series of events so devastating to your psyche and self-esteem that you consider yourself not worthy of being in pictures. As I started connecting the dots as a grown-up, I realized that she was always petrified of being photographed. She hated us taking pictures with her and we always had to do it suddenly or without her knowing it. We thought it was a weird fear of technology, but only now I understand that the reason was much more serious. It is a very sad story of transformation and if I ever had a chance to go back in time, I would want her to know some of the truths that I learned over the years. I would want her to know that people in life will hurt you, but you need to find those worth suffering for. That love is a shelter for all the storms in life to let you rest, to keep you warm and to eventually bring you home. That life's too short and the world's too big to live a lonely, loveless life, as love is an escape from the chronic loneliness in human life. That love doesn't come to you, it has to be generated inside of you. No one will be able to love you until you love yourself and that love is a gift of oneself to others, and then discovering yourself in others to repeatedly experience the joy of that discovery. That you don't love people because they're flawless, but you love them despite their flaws. And that although everybody lives in the same world, loving people live in a loving reality, but bitter people live in a bitter reality. And if I had a chance to find that lost little girl on the farm as her heart was being broken by heartless people, I would want her to know that for every empty heart in the world, there is someone's love waiting to be poured into it, and that the only measure of her worth and the worth of her actions in the future will be the love she will leave behind. If I had a chance to talk to my young self interacting with her, I would explain that others create artificial fences around them not to keep others away, but to test who is willing to break through them. And that the biggest human flaw is that they don't tell others about their love to them while they're still around. I would ask myself to make an effort to look behind that paper facade to see what it was truly protecting in an effort to enrich my and her life with love that everyone so desperately needs in this world, even though it is an abundant resource available in unlimited amounts to everyone. Today my grandmother is 93 and she lives in a care home. She's relaxed and relatively happy. Physically, she's doing great. Whatever made her my grandmother is no longer there, and whatever heavy burden she was carrying around in her head is long gone. She's curious of the people who visit her, and she doesn't need to pretend anymore to be cold and indifferent. If you hug her, she'll hug you back. If you laugh, she'll laugh with you. Whatever world she lives in now is much better than the one she had lived in for a very long time, and in a weird way, I'm happy that she's there with no memory of what took away her ability to love. Love, Peter. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, please consider supporting this channel. All links and methods listed on the screen and in the video description. Thank you for watching. Join Peter Hedrum Instagram and watch more videos.